Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Hey, look, guys, I know we're having technical difficulties because the Internet here is overloaded. But you know what? Uh, we are going to continue with it anyway. And let me tell you what we're going to do. The program is going to be pre post processed later on today and we will have it for you to see. So hang with us because we are going to get the job done. You know, we always get the job done. Anyway, today we are lucky to have one, the one and only editor, publisher of Op-Ed News. Rob Call. Rob, how are you doing today, my dear brother? Awesome. Let me tell you, folks, um, we've been having a great Netroots Nation here. And I understand that it's difficult watching right now, but have fun within yourselves until we kind of stream in and out, stream in and out. But we will be having fun today. Anyhow, Rob Call is the author of Op-Ed News. And hello, we, 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 have some other, we have some other visitors here as well. Charles, how are you doing, Charles? Hey there. I, saw, I saw Rob and you wanted to say hi. I'm glad you're here. I knew you'd be here. As you guys can see, we have visitors from all over as we do our live, uh, our live show. What's that? Yeah, <laughs> you're doing fine. Anyhow, folks, we've been having a great Netroots Nation show here. And what we want to do here is kind of give you guys a flavor of the things that have been happening. Rob, tell me a little bit about how you, how are you enjoying the, 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 the conference thus far? Well, it's great to see all the activists, all the people who are trying to make a big difference in making this world a better place. And they're doing it with all these different ideas and strategies and dealing with all these different issues. And the, the content of the conference is what's the problem? And then what do we do to fix it? And, and what are the very specific ways that we can reach people and get them active? And you know what? Um, even though this year, uh, and, and you noticed it, uh, normally every time we come to Netroots, we can be assured that we're going to get maybe a, a speaker of the house, some of the le Senate leaders, uh, a, 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 a large conference of the heads of the different parts of our government. This time around, I don't know if it's because it's post -COVID, so close post-COVID, and in fact, we're still wearing masks and all of that out here, but I think that has something to do with it. Well, you know, I was thinking about it, you know, because right. I've been to a lot of these show, these right. conferences, and they're, they're, you've usually got big keynoters. Right. And I was looking and looking, and I mean, there are some, like Ilhan Omar will be here to close the mm -hmm. conference. And Summer Lee is a newly elected member of Congress who's a great progressive from Pittsburgh. That's great. But there, there aren't a lot of big name key, keynoters here. But, and, and then I thought to myself, well, I wrote the book Bottom Up Revolution. Right. And that's top down thinking. You know, right. you don't need to have really big names in order to have a great conference with right. great people, with with great ideas and great information and inspiration. So I kind of got to give well, a little you know, slap there. It's not We don't really have to <laughs> slap ourselves. I mean, it's how we were taught to think. You know, if you, if you think about it, yeah. uh, we were taught to think a certain way. And it takes it takes a certain amount of effort to get rid of that muscle memory. You know, I speak a whole lot about the different ills that I've had in my life, the different prejudices that I've had in my life, etc. But um, you, you have to work at it. I had an interview with a young man that came in here. He said he spent 20 and, and, and his interview is still rippling through me. He spent 25 years in jail and he came out and he formed a company that's doing um, uh, media to change the way media is done. In other words, he said you would have media people come into uh, his space simply to go ahead and get a fantastical story about something that one specific thing that's happening in jail without looking at the the, the, per the humanhood, the person's uh, personalities of the people. He said what you see on TV about the prisons, not not the way it is. He also said the prison system has become a place where uh, it, it's it's a new slavery. He said, as it turns out, they were, uh, you know, they're, they're formed out to work. Uh, he was formed out well within his own system to to work on uh, to work on 
video editing and all that kind of stuff at 37 cents an hour. I guess it's better than breaking rocks, but that's it, been yeah. around a long time, I, work gangs. I mean. Right, but, but what, what he was trying to express was that there was never any kind of rehabilitation there, and if it weren't for having a support structure when he got out after 25 years, he would have been in a whole lot of trouble. 25, 25 years. years behind bars. He said it was a difficult adjustment coming back. And and the story, the reason the story touched me was, first of all, the, the same reaction you had to 25 years, but that he came out 25 years out of jail and you you listened to him. Uh, he, he didn't complain. He, he didn't try to take away that he was wrong and that he, right, he was rightfully imprisoned, not necessarily rightfully imprisoned for 25 years, because um, as he as he saw it, you know, the CEOs and all of that that have caused more deaths, that have caused more, caused more injuries, they are still there. But he's coming out and he's doing something to make a difference. He's, and he's it sounds like he's it seems that he's healed. Yes. And he's n not just angry, and he's he's a right. new person. He's a new person, and he said, were it not for even some of his correction officers, he would not have been where uh, where he is today. He said because they actually showed a certain a certain level of interest in him to to allow him to get where he is. No, today. it's like Viktor Frankl. He wrote a, he was in the concentration camps, uh -huh. and he wrote about how you know it's it's not what's happening to you; it's how you react to it. Right, exactly. And you know it, it doesn't. And, and the, the, I'd like to add a corollary to that because it's not only what has happened to you, but necessarily. What, what has happened to you that necessarily wasn't fair? If you, can, if, you can, if you can work around an unfairness that has happened to you and still come out with, a, with an attitude that says, in as much as that has happened, I am looking forward, that is such an important characteristic for one to have. You know, many, I, I think, and you know, it, it's a fine line because I think there are some, I think there are some who, because bad things have happened to them, they throw their hands up in the air and say, well, bad things have happened to me. It wasn't my fault to hell with everything. And then there are others who says, well, yeah, bad things have happened to me. It wasn't fair. But you know what? I'm not going to let that have an impact on what I can do for society, what I can do for myself, you know, what I can do for my family. Holding that grudge, holding on to that is like carrying a weight around for the rest of your life. That's very true. And if you can let go of it, then then you become a lighter person. And right. You can find new aspects of life to embrace right i and and you know the, the funny thing about it is i don't think it's a i i don't think what we're trying to tell people is to forget what has happened or it to them but to tell them look it has happened it is gone you know i, I had an, another interview with a woman that i met in in new york at the bridge alliances uh social uh, cohesion conference and she said it is necessary for people to atone for what they've done but she's not going to live her life she's not going to live her life waiting for that she knows it needs to be done but she's going to go ahead and 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 she's done just that she's done uh move on hey guys i know that the video isn't the best right now but we can't quite help it because of the networks maybe if a few more people stop streaming we will also be able to get better coverage but good the good news is that all the information that we're talking about today is going to be given to you in perfect format when we replay it. I think I'm going to get it done tonight. If I, if I, if nobody gets me to some party tonight that I probably need to go to a party tonight to loosen up the head, just maybe I'll be able to process it tonight, right? Uh, you work too hard, Egberto. <laughs> well, I mean, we. Uh, no, no, it's not Egberto. It's we. We, we work hard. I mean. We do. Uh, we do a lot of, I mean, I, I'm looking around a conference right now of activists. I'm looking at tables. People, people think people come to a conference and just have fun. I'm looking at a woman right now. She's dedicatedly typing in her pad. Likely, you know, I don't know, maybe a blogger or something of that sort. 
Uh, let's see. I think Egberto said we should atone for something. <laughs> oh, Lee Grant, you always catch the or particular words about what Egberto said. Dev, oh, let me let me salute all my my folks in here, and I hope you guys are gonna hear it. But we have Lee Grant, my conserv my one of my conservatives in the field. E two two four seven, who is one of our regulars as well. Peggy Lopez, welcome to Politics and Right, Peggy Lopez. Dev Denny says Lee Grant using earbuds seem to help me. I've never tried them before. Great to hear. Bridge says, yeah, Egberto Willis, tell them all, stop streaming. Oh, at least you heard that, Bridge. At least you heard that. Uh, we have Lee Grant says, I need to turn off the audio for this. No, you need to turn off the video for it. And, you know, although Rob is a very handsome guy, I'm pretty sure that uh, you guys don't mind seeing Mr. Handsome back here. Peggy Lopez says, not a techie person. I know there is some problem with away devices from how the show starts and stops going to crochet through the show crochet through the show but i promise you a better show the second time around um i don't know why we had it this bad this time around but anyway uh peggy says egberto some of the traumas inflicted upon others require professional help to leave behind and then many times in life the trauma will jump up to bite one in their ass peggy i want to tell you a story that this uh, person said in the inner I think I don't remember if he said this in the interview or he told me after the interview but I don't think it is something that I need to not say I don't think he would mind me saying he said he was married for a short time after prison but he gave an example of something that occurred that showed exactly what you're saying is correct and let me tell you the story what he said was he and his wife were in bed and he was asleep and she touched him on the side uh, you know, while he was sleeping and he jumped up ready to to rumble, if you will. And he said that came from when you're in prison. If you feel somebody touching you, you know, it. Is, you know, it's time to get defensive, time to defend yourself. And he said that was an automatic response that he had So that that uh, that what you just said there. Many times in life, trauma will jump up to bite one in their ass. You're so right, isn't it? Yeah, it's trauma. Right. It's PTSD. Right. And, and and that's what he went through. And he said he's he, he said he's he has worked on it, worked on it, is working on it, but that every so often something would trigger something in his mind that has him reacting. You know? Yeah, but and that's true. I mean, you're gonna have life trauma that's gonna affect you, but you know, I've been involved in positive psychology for yeah, a, a going, long we're time. We're going to talk about that. Talk a little about and, that. You know, the other side of it is that you, positive psychotherapy for much of its history was just involved in diagnosing what was wrong with people, identifying their symptoms, and then getting rid of the symptoms. And I got into psychology, positive psychology in the 80s because I really started asking the question, how much can you help people by teaching them how to lift themselves up? Right how to get do be well right and so yeah you got to deal with the old stuff but you can also build your strengths too right. you know I've, i'm working on a little rotator cuff stuff right now and so the pt is about strengthening the muscles around the weakened area right so you know yeah you're going to have stuff that you're going to carry your whole life but you can also strengthen yourself and right. you can also build strengths in other areas of your life so that you can have more joy and happiness. Right. And if you carry the old stuff and focus on it, it's going to make it harder to do that. Elite you up. Yep. Well, I mean, I, I, and that, that is the way I, I, I look at life. I, I'm writing a, my fifth book, uh, uh, which is called, and I always forget the name, but it's, it's, it's the tribulations of a Afro-Latino Caribbean man. That's the name of my new book. And what happens is people see me on, on, on the shows that we do all of the time and they always see a smile and they always, you know, it, it's almost like uh, as some, someone would say, you know, you don't act like if bad things have happened to you. And I said, yeah, a hell of a lot of bad things have happened to me, more so to me than, than a lot of folks because I was in business. I've been to China in business and done all the things. And you would not believe what have, I've gone through from stereotyping to many other things, right? So therefore, uh, but again, I never allowed that to be a weight on my shoulder. Not that what Peggy Lopez says couldn't occur. Like, um, uh, 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 let me let me give a, a personal example with my friend here, Rob, Rob, um, Rob Call. 
You see, I'm getting like you, man. We, we, we. <laughs> With my friend Rob Call. I sent him an email a few months ago that, that, I, that I, I thought warranted a response that I didn't get. I made an assumption out of my life experiences to make an assumption. And Rob said, was like, why the hell didn't you call me and let me know that you had sent something? Yeah. I made assumptions based out of my real world experiences. So, I mean, um, so there are a lot of things that happened and happens in life that, uh, again, causes that. Your thoughts on that, uh, Rob? Well, I'm not an Afro-Caribbean Latino. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm an but, old white guy. But, I mean, other things have happened. Not because but, yeah. but, you know, and, and recently I've been able to experience some of my examples of white privilege that I have. Right. And uh, when I'm with, with friends who are people of color. Right. And, and that has kind of blown my mind to realize it. And so and I drive around. No, I can go a little bit faster. Right. Because I'm an old white guy and I'm not probably not going to get stopped by the cops like someone else might. Right, right. And it's just made me so aware of just thinking about what it looks like from the other side. Right. To, to, to deal with that. And, and just knowing that, you know, as, as a boomer. Right. I, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to be a boomer because the general demographics for boomers are are maggot Trumpers right. and they're it's idiots yeah. and it's an embarrassment. Yeah. So I walk around and I see my guys my age and I cringe having to deal with them because they're I can't even say it in, in the yeah. radio. I mean, it's and it's so. Yeah, there are different perspectives, and and, right. uh, and and so I'd like to hear more about what it's like for you. Well, you know what I try to tell people is this: you know, um, like I said, what, one of one of the things that I've developed over the years is um, not allowing the actions of others that that is just air affect me. Now, a banker, if I if I if I needed a loan. And a banker is going to discriminate on me because of how I look. That's a problem. But if somebody around here calls me a name, if somebody around here look at me funny, if somebody around here tries to demean me, they don't have a material effect on my life. And that is one of the things in, that I preach over and over again worry about those people or worry about those institutions that their prejudice or their racism or their any ism i'm saying racism but it also is sexism it's also misogyny it's also all the isms right that that can actually have a materially let, let, let me give an example let's go ahead and say that a a, a banker doesn't like a banker doesn't like gay folk right and that person, because they don't like it, doesn't provide a loan that the person would otherwise. That's a problem. Yeah. Now, if that banker on the outside makes a, a, a slur against that gay person, that's all it is. A slur. A, that it's just hot air. It's only when it materially affects. It's much more malignant when people actually make decisions that affect other people's right. lives. And, you know, I used to tell my daughter when she was growing up, love everybody. Uh, engage with people and don't be scared to be alone because if you're not scared to be alone you won't worry about engaging with people and and uh, the, you know it's, it's, i used to call it a circular so i don't remember the words that i use but the whole idea is don't let things that can't affect you matter even if it seems to be hurtful i think we put too much effort in words as opposed to actions. In other words, worry about that which can actually materially yeah. hurt you. Sure. You know, and I and think because there's enough of that. Yes, yes, yes. Apparently, the, the show we had lost a we, we lost a piece of the show, which is not good. But guys, I'm going to recover this in the end. We we will recover this in the end. But yeah, uh, Rob. So anyhow, um, I'm going to make this a shortened show because since we're having these technical difficulties. But I, I promised the audience that while I was at Netroots, the only day they weren't going to get a show was my traveling day, which gave them a full hour 
of a pre-taped show. So um, give me some closing statements, my friend. Well, this conference is full of people, about 2,500, mm -hmm. who are trying to make a difference. Right. Who are, are addressing really specific issues all over the place, from the problems with the mega platforms to uh, mistreatment of sex workers. Right. And... Uh, justice, a universal basic income. I mean, there, there are so many topics here and we need all of them. Right. Right? And, and it's great to have a venue and a place where people can come together and talk about the issues and how to solve them. Because right. that's what's great about here is that people are talking about concrete solutions. Too. Right. Well, thank you very much, Rob Call, for being my special guest today on Politics Done Right from pleasure. Netroots Nation 2022. And guys, I give you my most sincere apologies for the network. I'll see if I can do better tomorrow, but we will be back. This is Politics Done Right. My name is Egberto Willis, and you know how I end this baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.